escorted by the Kingsmen. Bring her to Luna Forest. I'll be waiting near the cliff with 500 gold for you. Oops, gotta go. So I was playing this game and I was like, instantly, I wa there was something about it that I didn't want to play it at all. And I, I didn't realize what it was. I felt like one of these phone games that go automatically, etc. But after a battle or so, I just realized this game is much more difficult than anticipated. Let's say I go normal difficulty mode. Every enemy has a special sequence you have to fulfill. So it becomes a really intriguing puzzle game. Like that. The more you fail, the more damage you get. And same for your attacks, you just have to time them perfectly, else your damage is heavily reduced. Now, the story is a bit weak, but oh, this was really bad. Get a bit more damage. It's not really weak on, on story, but it's really cringe. So basically, when you level up, you can actually get some extra skills, which is really interesting. And now let's try it again with our upgrades. Should be much more easier. And prepare to fail a lot early on. So it's all about timing. When it's almost close, you have to hit them, and then it's good. And once you're upgraded, they'll become more powerful, so you can Watch do an extra again. shot. So that really works well. Nice, flawless. It's It keeps you so alert, it's perfect. Because every game becomes a little bit of a drag, but not if you have to focus permanently on what you're doing. Pretty much like Guitar Hero, etc. That is a Watch great concept, I'm not gonna lie. You have to click at the right times, exactly the right times. Every time. Which is... There's not much skill-based games anymore lately. That's all I'm not gonna say about that. So after having all this story done so far, it becomes really obvious that this game is much more fun than first anticipated. What I find really pitiful is that first impressions really matter. And yes, the storyline is funny. It's, it's super cringe, but it's funny. But on the other hand, the whole style is probably not appealing to a lot of players. And especially in this era where indie games and mobile games are not in the best place. If an indie game like this has the feel of a mobile game, so you go into your first fight and it instantly feels like, oh, this is a mobile game, people are already actually just sign off entirely. But what this game actually does really well is actually the combat is much more engaging than you think. You know, it's like playing Gems of War or whatever with hitting symbols or Guitar Hero while playing an RPG at the same time. It's really unique and it's really good and well done. But because of this style is so unique and different, it really will not be able to attract a larger audience. And that's a pity. For your information, the story is about a princess who doesn't want to marry a king and therefore the king is going to destroy the entire planet. Well, if she wasn't this selfish, she would have just, you know, be able to make a little sacrifice to save the entire planet, maybe. Thank you. Stunning the target. Let's do it. So he has a stun and he has a melee attack. I like it. So let's do a little bit of a battle, but deeper in. And let's see how it goes. And I'll be just commentating on what I'm doing in the match. And you'll see how a bit more of the advanced battles go. I'm dead in there. I don't know this one yet. It's Good enough. In time. You rest. Oh, I didn't feel that much. Uh. Oh, they're all blind. So let's give you some extra information while you hear me blabbering on the background actually. Being blinded is somewhat of a curse and a blessing as well because I think after a while you remember the timers on all your skills. So you have much less clutter when you're blinded because when you're blinded you don't oh see the God, bigger many? circle becoming smaller to the point you oh. have to hit the skill checks. Or the bigger arrow becoming, so actually the border disappears. But because you remember the time, it becomes much easier because the screen is much less cluttered. However, when you don't know your enemy yet, it becomes really much harder, actually, because you don't know what they're going to do, you don't know what the timers are. So another thing is you can rest instead of doing an attack, and then you get two EP. And EP you actually need to cast skills, you need like about four, so you're going to need to rest two rounds, That's or you can eat 
one of the fruits you brought. And the skills are much stronger, so it's better to rest one or two turns than to do basic attacks, which will that was really most likely was miss, really especially when you're blind. Not good. I'm not doing well, so... But other than that, Everybody's it's blind. pretty much fun. And there's a lot of curses, there's a lot of diseases, there's blind and there's poison, and everything just works in perfect harmony. Alice can actually heal and bless you, so it's also perfect. Ready. So you have your class system as well. So it's very well done, actually. So yes, definitely a fun game to play. It has a nice cringe story, good progression, and if you find it too hard, just play it on save mode and you'll get there anyway. Or just play it first a save round just to learn the enemy's attack so you can anticipate much better when you play it on veteran mode. And other than that, it's really well done, it actually it runs really well. It's only 7 euros. If you're into RPGs and you want a challenge, you want a bit of a puzzle game, just buy the game. It's definitely worth it. And you're gonna have a great time playing it. Reviews are pretty decent, but not many, because the game, I think, is a bit undersold. And the game is definitely a little bit underappreciated. Hi. And if they had any good way of promoting the game better, I think more people will play it. I like it a lot. I enjoyed it a lot. Now, if you know Tiny Build, they're the makers of Hello Neighbor, which is very, very, very well known. Graveyard Keeper, so you know they're definitely always in for a great game. Check them out. I really enjoy their content. The thing with Tiny Build is they are always going to make sure that every game they make is unique, is fun, and isn't a random copy from a strange game, but a really, really, really impressive game on its own. So check them out. Support them. You can check their YouTube channel as well. If you just go to Steam, you can check and follow their YouTube they have quite some followers. If there's more content creators like this that actually ensure they always bring in new games and absolutely unique games and definitely, definitely great games, then Steam wouldn't be such a garbage dump of unfinished alphas. Always stand behind your games. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you in the next guide.